pretty one, Ulysses. There it is. Hello, Booktube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with another Friday Reads, and I've had a, in some ways, very mediocre reading week. Those tend to be the books that I actually finished this week. And in terms of the books that I got started on this week, it's been fabulous. So, <laughs> let me tell you all about it. I'm a little tired today. It's 20 degrees out and sunny. And so I was going to have my Al Fresco debut for 2019, but I just don't have the energy to organize an outdoor filming today. So you'll have to wait a few more weeks. In fact, I may not do them ever again because they do tend to be a lot of work and fighting with noises and wind and I, I'm not sure. Maybe I'm getting too old for that. We shall see. Anyway, on to the books. I finished, uh, technically I finished three books in that I, I finished the Helen Humphreys novel, Machine Without Horses, the week prior, but I was keeping everybody in suspense because I'm a drama queen until Angie's and my joint review went up and that went up the other day so then I finally marked it as finished it was a one star read Ange loved it I was deeply deeply bored by it if you want more details you can check out our joint review but that is was only technically a book that I finished this week because I actually finished it the week before and yeah mediocre stuff so the Mary Lavin book of short stories in the middle of the fields was ended up being a real disappointment to me she's an okay writer prose wise sentence by sentence I don't think she's much of a short story writer the first one I enjoyed and I was very enthusiastic last week about that story and then all the other stories were very similar to that one thematically and technically and I was bored and almost disgusted by the ladylike pining for a man that was the central dynamic of each and every story about either a widow or a spinster just looking for love and scared to be alone like literally scared to be in the house alone fine there are people like that there were a lot more women like that in the era that she was writing these stories this collection was originally published in 1967 but I just was it uh, maybe if I'd read uh, the stories over a longer period I read them over a week and I was just sick of the uh, the little old ladies or or middle-aged ladies that seemed like little old ladies and they just had no identity except for their yearning for a man the was the most puke worthy one was where uh, we never did quite find out but maybe she was a 50 year old widow that gets involved with a much younger man and that was just gag me with a spoon all the the romantic stuff it was just i i dare any of you to read it and enjoy it but you know it's different strokes for different folks but i hated it by the end two stars a little bit more successful one star more successful just this morning i finished the alistair mcleod collection of short stories as birds, huh? as birds bring forth the sun and other stories. Alistair MacLeod is a Cape Breton writer, which is a, a region of Canada in the Maritimes. I am so stupid about um, the Maritimes that I'm not sure. Is that an island off the coast of another island? What the where? The, uh, <laughs> I've even read another book that that comes from Cape Britain. I, sh I should have checked that. Let's, let me check. I, I, I'm embarrassed. They're going to take away my passport. Cape Breton Island. What's the story on Cape Breton Island? It's part of the province of Nova Scotia. Okay. I didn't know that until right now. That's where he kind of grew up, and most of these stories are set there. And I, I didn't like them. I think a lot of people would like them, and in fact I know that a lot of people like them. It has a pretty good rating on Goodreads. I gave it three stars because I... Let me back up and tell you again, I promised I would tell you that I met Alistair MacLeod. He died uh, five or so years ago, in his 80s or something, 
And I met him about a dozen years ago when he came to AWP, which is that big academic literary conference that was in Vancouver. And I went and he was the keynote speaker. And the day, the first day of the conference, I was wandering around the book display. In wanders Alistair MacLeod, then, you know, jaunty man in suspenders and his typical cap, uh, whatever kind of cap you call that. And I just walked up to him and greeted him and said, welcome, Mr. McLeod. And, and he was so warm and friendly to me. And he stopped and he talked to me and asked me so many questions about myself that I started to get uncomfortable only because I thought that he thought I was his minder and that I was welcoming him officially to AWP. And so finally I said, Mr. McLeod, I just have to stop you to, you know, clarify. I, I, I'm not with the AWP. I'm not staff. He said, oh, no, that's fine, that's fine. He was just such a warm, friendly, older man. I loved him. And he gave the keynote sp uh, speech at the AWP, and it was kind of boring, I have to admit. But he had one, uh, and the other the audience of 600 people, I was the only one that was really paying attention. I mean, there was no energy in the room. It's too bad. He was just not cut out to give that kind of a speech. Um but he had one fa fabulous line. He quoted Thomas Hardy on Henry James. Uh, and apparently, I don't know how, if it's apocryphal or not. I think I've tried to look it up. But anyway, Thomas Hardy apparently said of Henry James, he chewed more than he bit off. And I laughed uproariously. And I was the only one in this audience of 600 that had any reaction to that line. And I just thought it was the best thing I'd ever heard. It's the only thing you need to know about Henry James. He chewed more than he bit off. And everybody in the audience looked over at me like, because I was the only one listening. I don't know, but I just thought it was fabulous. Anyway, these stories didn't work for me. Um, Alistair MacLeod, in his own Celtic, maritime Canadian way, he's kind of a dude bro. And like writers of his generation, he's really, really fascinated by the penis. And more specifically, animal penises and uh, animal husbandry and dogs. And I enjoyed the stories far more than I would have if you had told me that before I started them. They do. They did hold my interest, but I found every story pretty much was unsuccessful because of this weird emphasis on animals. And... The people didn't ever really quite jump off the page for me. The ones that were more focused on people without so many animals, uh, a little better, but also there was a real uh, Celtic superstitious energy to the stories, themes to the stories, curses coming down to the generations. No, 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 that's even worse than Bible shit. Get curses out of my fiction. So no, I didn't like it three stars. So that's what I finished. <laughs> and uh, I have bailed on one. There's a uh, really almost childish rant, if that isn't being repetitive, about why I bailed on this short story. So all, all I will say now, the video that Doris and I are making will be up in the next day or so. But for now, I will say I got to page three. It was pretentious drivel. Hated it. Bailed. In much happier news, I have started how many? Two books, I think. Yes. I have started The Tale of Genji. All 1100 1, page, uh, the, the first novel ever written in the, about the 12th century, I believe. And this is a buddy read with Britta, and I am really enjoying it. It's going to be a slog in the sense it's humongous. There are a lot of challenges to reading this. Characters are not usually referred to by their name, but this particular translation anyway, this is the one by Royal Tyler, has a lot of great footnotes and at the beginning of each chapter, uh, a dramatis personae, and it's, so it's, it's okay. That part I'm dealing with, but it's not an easy, quick read. What I'm absolutely loving is the modern feel of the psychology of these stories, the characters, Genji. And the the eroticism, I mean, this book. I under I'm understanding Japan so much better just from the six chapters or whatever that I've read from this, because Japan is just 
for all of its weird stuff about sex, I mean, it's the most undersexed population in the world, I think. People don't have sex in Japan, but all they think about is sex. <laughs> so I'm understanding that all they think about is sex much more when the, from this, dare I say it, seminal text. It's just pulsating with Eros. And Genji, this beautiful prince, we first meet him when he's, well, from from a from babyhood up, but he's, in the chapters I'm reading, he's 17 and 18, and he is drop-dead gorgeous, and everybody wants a piece of him, and he can have a piece of whoever he wants, and he does. He's a bad boy! But uh, the shenanigans are wonderful and problematic. One of my Japanese students said, and she doesn't speak much English, but she said this very pithily. She said, the tale of Genji, mother complex and Lolita complex. And that just about sums up his sex life uh, so far in this book. Britta has helped me come to terms with the fact that, you know, a 12-year-old was considered an, an, an adult in the 12th century. So you have to put things in perspective. But no, it's, it's a rollicking, fascinating, challenging. I don't think I'm going to bail. I think I'm going to keep going. We're doing a chapter a day, so it'll take us till early May or something to finish it, but really enjoying it. There's even some gay bits. And I have also started this novel, Mary McCarthy's The Group. This is a buddy with Britta and Ange, and we are about a third of the way in or so. I am absolutely adoring this. I have been wanting to read it for years, and it's my first Mary McCarthy and something fell out there. I don't know what. It's about a group of friends. They all graduated from Vassar College in 1933 or something like that. There's eight of them in the group. And what I'm noticing so far is that the chapters have a standalone uh, coherence and unity that they almost read like linked short stories. But no, it's really working as a novel too. But I I've never thought that about a novel that I was reading where it's actually occurred to me, you know, that chapter I just read, it could have been a short story and, and been magnificent. So no, the writing is really good. The characters are deeply drawn. The dynamic, the group dynamics and all of the relationships and uh, yearnings and cheatings and parents and all that stuff, just a joy to read. So this is going very well. So that's what's been going on. In terms of a TBR, this is very tentative. Leftover stuff on my TBR. We will finish this one uh, on the 27th, which gives me three or four days at the end of the month. But I also have books in progress. I have, I still have um, the Pearl Buck novel from last month, which I'm loving. I still have the Somerville and Ross uh, short stories, which I'm loving. And I still have the Nadim Aslam novel on audio, which I'm very much enjoying. So I may not get to anything new in the in the remaining uh, days of March, but there is a small chance that I will start one or some of these. And these are left over from my various TBRs for the month. This graphic novel, What Did You Eat Yesterday? That would be a very quick read, so I, there's, I should be able to fit that one in. The Elizabeth Bowen novel, The Last September, which I hear is a challenging read. And I was going to reread uh, this Mothering Sunday by Graham Swift for the Doris, I Heart doris -athon, but I, I, I'm not sure. That's my rice cooker. My rice is ready. Southern Biscuits will be happy to know that I'm eating grilled salmon on rice for my brekkie. And then uh, April is fast upon us. Natalie of... My reading days and I had talked about doing a bunch of buddy reads of some Indian fiction. We are just starting to talk about scheduling that. So those of you that had indicated an interest in those buddy reads, stay tuned. We should have some announcements about timing or we'll be in touch with you about timing fairly soon. So it might start as early as next month. I'm not sure. And also a bunch of you had indicated an interest in A Suitable Boy which is a thousand pages or something. And I am really intimidated by that one. Just now that I'm in this, this far into Genji and I have another year long 1600 page buddy read starting with my darling Peg in August. I'm not sure I can take on another massive tome this year. So uh, I'm still thinking about it, but if not next year. All right, I have nothing else to say. What do you have to say for yourself? Thanks for watching.
Thank you.